Hi again everybody, Nick here for Creation Army TV. As always, thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook, so if you want to follow me, it's at Creation Army. So I've mentioned the concept of knockout in some of my previous videos, um, as well as the Pathfinder. I haven't done any uh, demos on Pathfinder or knock knockout quite yet. Um, for those of you that have used Illustrator and tried to use the Pathfinder before, you'll know what, um, what its basic function is, and that is it lets you basically cut, uh, put two shapes together, combine two shapes or objects, and com um, either do cutouts or uh, sometimes you want to isolate um, you know, what, where they intersect or maybe you want to cut out something from the bottom or maybe you want to discard where they intersect. So Pathfinder lets you perform all of those functions. And I won't get into in, in detail how, how those work, maybe in another video. But something that I find more useful um, and versatile is the concept of knockout. Now, some this Pathfinder cutout is great if you just have two shapes that you're combining. Um, in this example, I've got the white circle and the orange square, and the white circle is cutting into, if I click on it here, you can see that it's still a live shape, and it's cutting into the square and giving it the appearance of uh, this radius cut into it. And the way you do that is you just take the two of them. Um, I like to hold Option and click on the um, minus front. What that does is it hides the front object, but it gives you the illusion of the cutout into the lower object, and so it looks like you know cookie cutter, like it's been cut down into it. And that's and that's great. The reason I hold Option is to keep it keep it live, so I can still edit the circle. Um, if you don't hold option, then it'll be a permanent cut, and you won't, you'll, your circle will basically be gone. But I like to keep my objects as, as live and preserved as possible. So this is great, like I said, for just two regular shapes. But sometimes you'll have complex groups, and you want one object or shape like this circle to cut down through it, and you just can't do that with Pathfinder. So Knockout is a great way to achieve that. So let's talk about, in this video, some of the functions of Knockout, and I'll show you how it relates to groups, symbols, um, and some other great uses for it. Even just individual objects, you can do object, you can do Knockout within appearance. So on the right here is an example that looks exactly like the Pathfinder example on the left. I mean, it's the same two objects, except in this instance down here on the bottom right, I haven't used the Pathfinder. Pa uh, palette at all to cut this radius into the square. Instead, these two objects are grouped together. That's with object group or command G or control G. And once they're grouped, you want to go up to your transparency palette, which I have located here, and there's a checkbox that says knockout group. So by default, it's unchecked, and my group. By, again, by default, sorry, let me uh, make this white. Okay, so when I group them together, they first look like this, and I'll check knockout and nothing happens. But that's because I haven't applied transparency to the upper object. So what this means is that the upper object will, um, instead of actually physically cutting into the object below it, it'll give you the illusion that something is cut through. In other words, you can make the analogy, and you can think of this as having x-ray vision. So if you need to see through your orange square, you can use knockout, and your objects will remain live and editable. So I will take this group, right, and I'm going to take this white uh, circle by itself. I'm going to hit A on the keyboard for direct select to select one object within a group, and then I will take its transparency or its opacity to zero and it creates this, what looks like a cutout. Really, I'm seeing x-ray vision through the corner of the square right here where my mouse is. And the reason that works is because I checked knockout. So group your items, check knockout, and then go ahead and select which item you want to make you know, your x-ray vision window. So that's sort of the difference. Now these, these two things look exactly alike, but in, a, in further examples, you see, you'll see why they differ. This, this concept of transparency knockout is great. You don't have to go to zero opacity on this white square. It can be 30 if you want it to be. You'll still be able to see 
this white square at 30% opacity. And in fact, if I draw another object, place it below that object, I can still sort of see through this white square to the black object below. But it is a knockout group with this orange square. So its opacity um, sort of eclipses or trumps the transparency of this orange square that, it, that lives below the circle. So let's look at an example of why knockout is great. Um, in a recent project, I had to illustrate uh, the side view of someone's house. So I made the siding, and then I made this window, and I grouped them together. And then I, of course, hit the checkbox for knockout group. And so knockout is now applied to the group. And you'll see it up here, group, contents, and then you'll see opacity. Once you hit knockout, you'll see other options here. That just means that knockout is applied because by default it's not applied. But with things like windows, these are things that we see through and we'll see the inside of the house through the window. So how do we get that window to be transparent? Here's a, let's say this, let's pretend this is the television inside the house, this black object. I'll put it where, you know, where it would be in the living room. And of course I'll, I'll push it below everything on the layer. And now we can see through our window and that is the TV on the inside of the house. Or maybe our character is standing here looking out on a rainy day or something like that. But this window is actually tinting. See how it's not pure black anymore. It's sort of tinting everything below it. And you know this is a solid wall, but wherever I move this window, we're, we're seeing x-ray vision through to the inside of the house. So how do I achieve that? I'm gonna direct select this rectangle. I made this rectangle and I basically gave it um, three fills. The first fill is the, you can consider it to be the glass. And that is just a blue uh, rectangle with 30% opacity. And then I take this second fill and that is the border of the window that's just um, using offset path. I push that out 10 pixels. So I have a nice white border on the window. And then I have an almost identical orange fill below that. And that creates this drop shadow on the side. Okay, without it actually being you know, a drop shadow, it's just a solid fill. But since this entire path is knockout, this is, this is what you have to do. You make your path, and when you make a square by default, knockout is, is unchecked. So if I want this, uh, let's say I make the opacity 20 on this black rectangle, and make it a part of the group, drag it in like this using the layers palette, this is a 20% opacity uh, rectangle, and, you and in order to have a, a complex appearance where it knocks itself out, you have to uh, use the appearance palette. I'll do this really fast because you're probably familiar with the appearance palette. So there's my white border on my window. So, you know, what's, what's going on here? It doesn't look right. It's, you know, it takes adjustment. Well, I want that white border to be... Um, fully opaque or 100% transparency so that I don't see through it. But now my window is messed up. You know, this doesn't look like a window anymore. It's not, it's not transparent. The reason for that is that this entire object, not the group, not the whole group, the siding, the window, just this one object has to have knockout applied to it so that this fill punches through and lets us see through the white fill below. So to do that, you'll come up to here and you'll touch the path as a whole, right up here in the appearance palette, then come over to your transparency palette and select knockout. Now, you'll sometimes you'll see this dash going through. That means that um, an object within a group has transparency, but not the entire group. Um, you wanna have this fully checked um, with a checkbox right there. So now this, um, rectangle with two fills is now knocking itself out and now we can see through it with x-ray vision to the contents of the house inside. So you can do you know a lot with this. I can take this window, put it over here, I can duplicate it um, within the group and now I have two windows on the side of the house and I can see through them to the television or the artwork inside. So it comes in really handy and you would not be able to accomplish this using the Pathfinder palette. You have to do this with groups combined with knockout. 
Um, let's see, I talked about, give you that example. So here are some more examples. Um, th this isn't a detailed illustration like the house example I just gave you, but here's what happens. Here's a group, here's a regular group of objects with different appearances, and there's no knockout applied. You can see in my appearance palette, there's, there's nothing, you know, there's a little dash here because this symbol does have a graphic style or an appearance with knockout applied. That's why I get that dash. That's telling me that an internal member of the group does have knockout on itself. But if I were to apply knockout to the group, it would look like this. The, the internal fill on this symbol is knocking out the orange fill of the rectangle below. And this circle, which I made 0% opacity, is now causing a hole inside of this, or what, what looks like a hole. And the great thing is I can adjust this however I want to and treat it as if it's any other object. I can even duplicate it. You know, I can, uh, let's say I add a star somewhere and I want it to be part of this knockout group. I'll open up this triangle on the layers palette. I'll find the group with knockout applied and I'll just put that star inside of that group. And then of course, I'll make that star transparent by going up to the transparency palette and typing in zero for opacity. So now my star is now knocking out this group as well. So you can add, subtract, you can change the number of objects inside of a knockout group. And what's cool is, like I said, it's like x-ray vision. I'm, I'll make this black square, I'll push it to the bottom of my artboard and I'll place it behind um, this knockout group and you can see through the knockout group to the object below. There it is, um, living right behind this um, sort of screened out fill on the rounded rectangle. So knockout's very handle, handy for that. Now that's knockout applied to a group. That's the most common form of knockout that I've run into. But you can actually do knockout on individual objects. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna push this down for now. So how did I achieve this um, appearance? What's happening here is, even though it looks like white text with an orange stroke, it's actually not. This is white text with three fills. We've got our white fill, then we've got an invisible fill going around, and that's our first sort of outline that appears to be blue. It's actually invisible. And then the final fill you can see in the appearance palette here is orange, and it creates this sort of outline effect. And this has no strokes. There are there there is no, uh, in other words, there is no blue going around the word text. This is one object that is actually internally knocking itself out. And here's what's happening. I added a, a pink fill. You can make it any color because I made its opacity zero. And of course I hit knockout for the entire object. You can see knockout is applied. And when I made this fill, I'll, I'll make it visible now so you can see what, what happens. That's it in its visible form. That's that pink, thick outline. And then I used offset path to push it outward using the offset path effect, you can increase the number and it just it grows or increases um, in, in thickness. And I'll hit OK. And then I added another fill that was orange and this one is offset just a little bit more than the pink one. And I made the pink outline 0% opacity. And by doing that, I'm oh, sorry, I'll, I'll select the pink fill here and dial in a 0% opacity in the transparency palette. And what happens is that invisible or fully transparent fill now knocks out the visibility of the orange, giving us the sort of appearance or illusion of, a, of an orange outline, even though it's a solid fill. And the great thing is you can group a couple of um, items of text together. These, in other words, these are grouped and knockout is applied to this entire group, which is two text objects. And the knockout from this upper text object, the one that says with knockout, is similar. But the, the knockout here is actually punching all the way through the group. And it's actually blocking or knocking out the big word text behind it. So it's, it's fully knocking out through the group 
to see the items below. And I, to demonstrate that, I'll, I'll undo one time. I'll draw a black uh, bar, and then I'll push it below everything on the layer. And you can see the black object behind everything. And I think this thoroughly demonstrates what Knockout does. So this is great because now I can, you know, of course you can change the text to wherever you want, you can change the typeface, you can change the colors if you want to, but now you have something that is punched through and you'll be able to see things uh, behind it if you need to. Um, be aware, if I were to take this entire group right here and I wanted to give it a drop shadow, um, to do that I would take this entire group, come up to the appearance palette, click the group, and then you would find stylize drop shadow. I've already applied one here, so I'll just expose it. So notice that my drop shadow is actually being hidden here where my mouse is. That's because Knockout will actually hide with transparency raster effects such as um, drop shadow right here. Same thing would happen if I had a, a some sort of outer glow. It would actually be it would actually be knocked out or hidden. So again, this blue outline on the text is not a blue outline at all. We're actually seeing through this object to the blue background below everything. So if at any time you changed the background, let's say it, let's say I'll change it right now to like a an orange color. Now this is what this appearance looks like because we're seeing through the text to the background below. So I'll, I'll undo that one time because it was hurting my eyes. <laughs> so there you go. Um, Knockout is, is very useful. It's got lots of, um, lots of uses. So I encourage you to go into Illustrator, um, experiment with Knockout, and it's, it's pretty cool, especially when it's mixed with um, transparency masking, which I'll get to in a future video. Thank you for watching. Again, experiment with this. Stick around for uh, some future tutorials. I'm making new videos all the time. And uh, please subscribe to my channel. Take care. I'm Nick with Creation Army TV. Bye-bye.